Okay, so this is a review of the assignments for this particular course. As I mentioned before, we have four projects and six assignments. They're all worth the same amount, but projects are going to be a little bit more time consuming. So I sort of want to show you the projects first, and you're going to flip out when you see a couple of them. They seem a lot harder than they really are, and they seem a lot easier. Some of them seem easier, some of them seem a little bit harder. The first one we haven't covered yet, and this is the interesting thing, is you're probably going to want to start with the assignments first and then move into the project second. But there's only four projects, so I thought I'd show you those first. So we're going to have one on Perl. Believe it or not, this is easy. This is your just. This will take you like half an hour to an hour. Problem is, are you going to be able to test it? So if you install Ubuntu, this is why you need Ubuntu or something. If you, if you install, or if you have a MacBook, you have Perl already. Perl's installed for you. But in fact, let me just test mine real quick. Perl interpret is on there. I just started it. So if you get if it comes like this, it means it's waiting for the name of your file. <laughs> it's like running, but it's it's gonna sit here and wait. I started the interpreter, so I'm gonna control C to stop the interpreter. Uh, so yeah, if you have a MacBook, you're you're pretty much set for this course actually. Uh, if you don't have one, you can get one for like six hundred dollars. I think it is. Yeah, you can sell MacBooks for this course. <laughs> I think five or six hundred bucks is probably not a bad investment, really. If you're thinking about if you're a graduate computer science student, it's not a bad investment at all. Seriously, uh, all your development tools are on there, and you got Unix. I mean, what not a better way of learning Unix without using a I mean, by using a Unix system? So, all right. So the first one is going to run through a tutorial. I'm not going to run through the entire assignment, but this is going to show you and reiterates the point of CGI and Perl. And it sets up an environment where it goes through the gateway. So you set up a web page, actually, that runs a Perl script. And it tells you everything. The only problem is, is the testing of it. If you've got Apache, you can do it on your own computer. You'll need Apache, which you have, actually. Easy to install on your MacBook, actually. You may not actually have an Apache server installed, and you might want to not want to keep it, because it's a little time-consuming. Uh, excuse me, energy resource consuming. So. Um, it's like installing Oracle or something, you know. It's going to have a service running in the background. If you're not running a web page from your notebook computer, you're not, gonna, you're not running an HTTP server from your notebook on a regular basis, you probably want to disable that or turn it off. Uh, but it's nice. You can actually set up an entire server on your notebook. You can do it on a Windows machine as well. So the trick with this one is just cutting and pasting and creating the pieces and putting the pieces together. Testing it is the problem. And the Perl script is just going to run some environment, use the environment variables that are on the server and run some commands. And it's all the code is given to you. You don't have to know how to program in Perl at all. No programming experience required for that. And stop me as I go through this. I'm just kind of previewing everything, just in case I don't see you again. <laughs> so for, so project number two is not too bad. It is... Practicing and creating using basic scripts. This is actually kind of a fun one. Uh, so it goes through and it does do a little, you know, make a directory for bin and write a script. You know, here's a simple shell script. It's going to give us the date and who and cal or calendar. And this is this is actually kind of cool. Type in cal, you get the calendar. <laughs> yeah. Date, you get the date and <laughs> the time. So there's a lot of neat little. Unix commands that you'll learn throughout the course. Change mod, make it executable, run your script. So this is basically creating a, without using Perl, with using a shell script. Creating a shell script and running it. And there's like 10 or 15. And some of the responses to this doesn't have anything. I mean, there's no output for it. You just observe to see what happens. So it's not like you have to answer like 15 questions or something. You're basically running some stuff, and, you know, save the file, make it executable, run the file, you know, kind of thing. And there's like a little application here for word count, you know. In fact, WC does a word count for you, It'll automatically count the number of words in a file and stuff. So you know, it, it introduces you and teaches you a lot of the Unix stuff and commands, and as well as gives you a little exercise to go through. So that was number two. Number three is that when I said about writing a shell script to go email out 50,000 people in one shot. You don't actually have to email 50,000 people, though. <laughs> so they might not like you if you do that. So what you're doing is what's called a here document. So 
If you're writing a shell script using a here document, well, it's just nothing more than taking it and saying, you know, dear Vanessa, dear Scott, dear Joe, dear Mary, dear, and you're substituting in. Well, it means you're going to use a environment variable or something. You're writing a little script, simple little script that's going to substitute a value for a variable, stick it in there, and run it, and it you'll see how it comes together actually. So, and then you're answering uh, the following file permissions questions. So a little bit about file permissions in there too. That was number three. Uh, number four is easy. Number four is easy. This one's uh, none of these assignments are really that hard actually. Well, this shell, tiny shell one is. Uh, why should you never specify set user ID permissions, the right permissions, same file, blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of getting at the logic a little bit in terms of uh, file access and permissions and stuff, which is a project number four. It's like answering uh, some questions. But the second one here is uh, you're writing a C program to demonstrate how the shell interprets background processes. That's actually kind of simple. You know, it does it, don't make the, don't get overwhelmed by the descriptions, because you can automate everything you want. So you can use built-in, and it forces you to kind of figure out what's built in. How can I get that information? And most of the stuff is using built-in commands and running it, you know, a system from a, from a C program. That scared me. Okay, so that was the uh, four assignments, uh, excuse me, four projects. The assignments themselves, these are the fun ones. I call these the fun ones. And these are the ones where you're going to be running it on your computer and go, the command doesn't work. Well, check your shell. See what the equivalent command might be for your shell. Unix utilities, you know, and this is, I would start out with the homework assignments first because they're easier. So here you're writing a command to determine who is logged in on a specific terminal. Actually, I gave you that one already. It's in the first lecture. In fact, all of the answers to all of these questions are in the lectures. So, actually, I may not have given you that one. That might be in the next lecture. But yeah, um, you know, copy a file here, move a file there, and assume that uh, you might say, you know, do it off a root. Well, you don't have to. You know, just do it anywhere you want in the directory structure. Do it off a home if you want to. You know, you know for your user directory or something. So. Number two is pretty much the same thing, except for you're filling in the blanks now. So your first one is going to have you know run this command, run that command. This one's going to say what happens. So in your home directory, make three copies, one at a time of your foods file, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So well, make it up. It's just text files. But there might not you know just but breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's nothing nothing really to to output. In fact, some of these exercises you know you look at it says moved a dinner into beta the directory. And you can just say done, finished, okay. So, I mean, it sounds like you can really cheat on this and not do it if you wanted to, in some of the cases, because there's no, there's no, like, it's not like, it's an exercise. It's not like, you know, I'm forcing you to come up with an answer to a question or something. It's just, a, just do it, okay, and go, okay, done, you know, or sometimes it's going to ask, you know, without leaving gamma copy dinner from beta to alpha, uh, you're trying to figure out how to do it, and what you're going to write here is the command that you're using for it. So, in some of the questions, you'll be writing the command. Some of the questions, you'll be answering a question or something. And some of them, you'll be saying, okay, I did it, kind of thing. So, and as I was saying before, you know, you get in what you, you get out what you put in. So, <laughs> if you want to cheat on it, go ahead, but you're probably not going to learn anything. Um, assignment number three is all about file access rights and permissions. So, it's about using the change mod account, excuse me, change mod command. You're making a test file and you're going to change permissions, so you're going to write down the commands. So it's write them in the blanks, construct the following commands. So you're writing, in fact, oh, this is the theme of all of these assignments. You're writing the command. So instead of me telling you run this command, you're writing the command. So. And we'll have a lecture on the, we'll have a whole lecture on this too. Change mod. It's really pretty easy. Homework assignment number four, again, looks like, looks pretty similar, right? <laughs> They're all the same format. There's another little exercise. A lot of people actually like the little exercises because it really does give them some practice using Linux. But, you know, you've got to have a system to use. So that, that's your first exercise is to get yourself a system to use if you don't have a MacBook. Uh, but, again, you know, run some stuff here. This one's actually a little bit more challenging. 
um, because it's looking at finding stuff and using the translate command and stuff like that. So that would be number four. Number five is uh, is uh, this is interesting. The site still works. I actually tested it the other day. This is looking at the internet component. So you need an internet connection when you do this. And you're running ping. So we're, we're looking at number five at improving your uh, telnet FTP command for internet usage from a server environment. So client from a server. I mean, you don't, you don't, you have to have internet access. We don't really need anything else. So I mean, in order to run this exercise, you're going to need it because how are you going to, you know, how are you going to FTP something or in fact, what you're going to do is you're going to download, and you're going to use gzip here too, so you'll have some practice on compressing files and looking at tar files and uh, picking out images. So it says get all 20 GIFs. It's actually quite easy. There's a tar file that has them all in there. <laughs> so just one file you're downloading. So don't let the wording scare you. <laughs> and if you can't find the tar file, you can download one of them. In fact, here's a here's the server here. Just make sure the server is still up. If not, I just switch the server to something else. And my file is still going. That's pretty good. So let's see. Oh, Garbo is no longer. I uh, can't establish a connection to the server, Garbo. Oh. Wow. Okay. So I'll have to update that then. I'll have to pick, an, pick another server that you can go to to download images. In fact, I just might put it on vHacker or something. So. TA, could you remind me, please? This is assignment number five. I need to figure a different server and put some images out there. I remind you, you're not going to be, no one in this class is going to be doing number five yet, probably. Although I do have some students who are working on the assignments already. Uh, assignment number six here, homework number six is the last one, last but not least, is probably it's using grep. So it's going to improve your grep skills, essentially. Uh, and again, it's just number, you know, number one through, there's like a dozen or so questions. So I'm going to have you grep this, grep that. And it works with regular expressions as well. So we're going to cover the concept of regular expressions as we get through, probably not till the next interactive weekend session. And that actually pretty much concludes all of the work. We don't have a midterm. We have a CSLO essay, which is going to be kind of like a writing assignment, not really a, not really a hands-on kind of exercise. So it's still six assignments and the four projects, which seems like a lot, but it's really just small stuff. And they're all on different topics, which is really cool. So if you don't like one, you don't have to worry. The next one will be on a different topic. So. Questions, comments, or concerns? We're on time, too. The final exam will be multiple choice and a true false and maybe some short writing stuff, maybe some short answer. And I put the dates actually out. Did you say when was it? Or what is what's going to be on it? Uh, it's actually in the class box at bhacker.com. In fact, all three of the dates are on there too. In fact, it's spelled bhacker.com correctly. It is. Final exam will be on April 14th and 15th. So here's how it works, actually. This is the last weekend, yeah. You only have to show up for one of those two days, however, the 14th or the 15th. So I have a lot of students who will take it on Saturday and fly back. They'll fly in Friday night, take the exam Saturday, fly back Saturday night. Won't be there Sunday. So that's the ex expedited way of doing it, actually. So <laughs> and our next class meeting is on the 10th and 11th of March. So. And we still have tomorrow. So. And as promised, I, I gave the class an option. We can have two days of kind of equal length, or we can have a long, long day and a short day. You guys wanted equal length days. So tomorrow we're going till about the same time. And probably a little bit longer. We'll probably have to go till 3 o'clock tomorrow. Just to get, unless I talk fast. Every time I just talk fast, drink more coffee. So, questions? We're good? If we're good, we're good. We're gonna, we can go home and enjoy the rest of our rainy afternoon. If it's still raining, I don't know. Or go get Linux installed. How's that? Or not installed. Make a, make your ISO download your ISO image and burn it to a CD and boot your system and see if it works. That's a good thing. That way you can bring it tomorrow and you can use it to write some scripts. The only problem with using the uh, the CD is that uh, you'll have to use a thumb drive along with that uh, because you'll need to save the data somewhere. You can't save on a 
on a CD-ROM, obviously. So, and you don't want to lose your work. So and you're writing text files, so it fits just fine. I want a, a cheap little USB drive. So, and you'll need that if you're going to use one of those. And they call them live disks. So you don't have to install it. You can run from a live disk. But you just need a USB thumb drive or something to run with. So. Questions? And you don't need anything because you got a MacBook. So. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Oh, you do? Oh, that's a work computer, yeah. Okay, then, if you don't have any questions or comments or concerns, I'll hang out a little bit to catch people who just came in, actually. And then uh, we're done for today, so I'll see you tomorrow.